Imagine you're a young girl finding out her father has been killed by invading demon forces. You and your brother stand alone now. Your first course of action is to go into the basement and free an old demonic sword that is in your family's possession. The second course of action is to awaken the sword from its long slumber by raw dogging your brother. Demon Sword Incubus. Let's go! Demon Sword Incubus is published by Orogi Japan, the same company that brought you the infamous zombie apocalypse shooter Seed of the Dead, and it's much better sequel Seed of the Dead Sweet Home. They always make sure you get the best porn game stuff you can get, made on the budget of a bag of rice. The developer is called Briano. Unfortunately, I couldn't find much about them, mostly because my Japanese isn't as polished as my knob. It seems that this is their first game they developed. Demon Sword Incubus itself is a side-scrolling brawler that is pretty much in vain of something like Streets of Rage. It is a strange beast that needs to be explored, like a deep, dank and very moist cavity. First, let's talk about the story. You are Amila, daughter of Lord Alphonse, who governs the Latomos Plains in the Kingdom of Nagus. One day, Nagus gets invaded by the warlock Rainwald and his army of monsters. So Amila takes up the mantle to stop the invasion. But how does one stop an invasion of dangerous monsters? Well, obviously she goes uh, uh, into the basement, where her family has locked away an ancient sentient sword called Incubus that runs on- <coughs> Since Incubus is weak from its slumber, it tricks Amelia into raw dogging her brother in front of Incubus, so it regains its power. The next morning, Amelia heads out to stop the demon invasion. You might want to stop here if you're worried about spoilers, but to be honest, there is not really anything to the story. It's porn. You know how it goes. The game itself has like no plot at all. The most story development is right at the start of the game. After the player encounters a few loose story beats, such as that she gets hunted by the three basic bitches from the Royal Guard because she uses Incubus, they also team up later with Amila to help her stop Rainwald, but there is not really more to it. After Amila defeats Rainwald, he dies unceremoniously and with his last breath, he summons a mega demon from the depth of the abyss. That is the last enemy Amila fights before she sets off in the sunset to explore another continent for some sequel bait, I guess. As expected, and as I said before, the story is thinner than Kate Moss in her prime. That is a given in the genre, especially when it is more geared towards a quick fap like Demon Sword Incubus is. If you want something more meaningful, something like Dead and Aegis would fit that bill better, but isn't anything to fap to. And if you fap to it, please seek help. And with that being said, let's talk about the gameplay, because that is where the meat and potatoes lie. The game itself is surprisingly good, despite being a little bit janky. It starts with the surprisingly good and robust combat system. On the normal difficulty, you can still get through the game by just button mashing, but you also already can get a lot more out of it gameplay-wise if you want to. The game utilizes an easy-to-learn combo system with two attack buttons sword strikes and magic attacks. Both stay mostly the same over the remainder of the game. However, the game also puts some special attack inputs in that are similar to Mortal Kombat. For example, down forward attack magic does a special attack. That does a little bit more damage and has a higher chance to succeed at critical hits, which do vastly more damage than normal hits. These special attacks usually serve as combo starters or can be implemented into a combo to vastly extend it. You can also 
unlock more special attacks over time when you collect XP. If you're fast and good enough, you can most likely juggle your enemies for a good amount of time. This can in turn lead into special attacks and will completely obliterate the opposition on the battlefield and make you feel like a total badass with a wet snatch. The fluent control helps, however, sometimes it seems like the inputs aren't like really properly registering. Uh, what I appreciate is the fact that you can put two special moves of your choice on a dedicated button. That totally helps a potato like me a lot. While slicing up her enemies, Amila gains experience and in turn levels. Each level gains a certain amount of character points that you can put in attributes like health, mana, strength, defense and so on. There are also some passive abilities and new moves to unlock. While this system is perfectly serviceable, I personally wish it wasn't there. Just give me everything from the get go and let me have at it. The level system feels a little bit tacked on, it stifles progression or the way you learn the game in an artificial way. I think the progression should come naturally by you mastering the combat system and not being gated off by a level system, especially not in a game like this. While I applaud the devs for implementing the system, it feels tacked on to me. It's unnecessary and just feels like it is there so the player have a sense of progression. You absolutely do not need this and I wish more devs would realize that tacked on systems more often than not water down the experience. This is a very competently made beat em up and it didn't need all this additional shit to engage the player. Overall, I have to say, though the combat system was definitely made by someone who knows what they are doing. That, that is the important part here. The difficulty, I finished the game once on medium and once on hard, tends to spike a little bit in some segments. I mainly think about the slime end boss and the royal guard fight, as they are different from what you've encountered before those. They kind of mix things up without really getting annoying. However, the last boss comes straight from fucking bullshit design school and I hate it. The last boss ruined it a little bit for me. Normal enemies are okay designed, they have okay animations and different enough attack pattern to be distinct. It is a joy to plow through the monster masses with your sport. However, there is a certain risk attached to it. So let's talk about the sex scenes. The game basically went to the Maltese quest school of fucking. You lose, you get railed. Once the heroine loses all her HPs, she is being passed around between the monsters like your mom at the local swinger club. Unlike Melty, however, you don't have a dedicated lose button. And talking about Ram Terry, I am coming for you. I see you, Karen's prison? You are on my shit list, and then we will go full smegma. Never go full smegma. Where, where was I? Uh, oh, right. My favorite thing. Fucking. The dedicated loose button is made up by a gallery you can make ample use of to see what happens in case you lose. And let me tell you, Amila gets raw dogged by almost everything in this game. The love cavity is not safe in the slightest, even during combat. It's not safe, because one mechanic of the game is that Amila's clothes get damaged and she fights naked at one point. In that status, it can occur easily that one of the enemies takes advantage of it and just snacks on Amila's snatch. Which gives you experience points, but also kind of breaks the flow of combat just a little bit. I'll allow it, because it's a sex game. There is no extreme fetishes here, and it's essentially just an ugly bastard trope losing violation. So if you're into that, you have so much fat material here. It's the standard stuff you expect from Japan, so if you don't have an issue with it, then why not, right? A bit of a weird issue arises from how some of the models are handled. Some of them don't have clothes on, and when it's going down, 
they suddenly experience a massive growth spurt and then suddenly have a 20 incher between their legs they could use as a baseball bat. I just wish they had a dick swinging around from the start. I mean, it's a minor complaint, but come on. At least when they run around naked, give them some dick. Let's talk about how everything sounds and looks. The graphics and animations are what you would expect from a budget title like this. Amila and her attacks are super flashy and well animated. The enemies, they are okay. The bosses are quite alright, but the rest is a bit cheap. And you can see it. At least the fucking is well animated. I mean it should be, with various poses and techniques. The game overall looks good for probably being made on a budget of a bag of rice. The soundtrack isn't something to write home about, lots of, <clears throat> lots of stock sounds and music, most likely music from Epidemic Sound, as they tend to take it from there, because I know that Seed of the Dead Sweet Home has some Epidemic tracks. The voice acting is good, as expected. The Japanese voice actress is killing it. They're, they really mastered the art of moaning and saying no at the same time. Overall, the soundscape is probably another corner cut, but it does the trick where it needs to do it. Overall, I would say this is a good effort for a budget title. I'm thoroughly impressed of what the developer has done with their limited time and budget they probably had. I did enjoy my time I had with it. One playthrough of the game is about an hour, which is extremely short, but the game is definitely geared towards multiple playthroughs. For example, you unlock new costumes and can test your skills on higher difficulties. And then, boom, Amila's adventure already soars up to six hours plus in terms of playtime. And I'm pretty sure I will go back for more. I'm okay with that kind of length for $20. If this is your cup of coffee, you need to know for yourself. If you are someone who desperately needs a score to make sense of my ramblings, I give this game seven out of 10 busted nuts. Thank you for watching, now go rub one out. Hi there, thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the content, leave a like, comment, maybe drop me a sub, that would be awesome. I plan on doing more stuff like this, and I also stream every Saturday here on the platform. Maybe you want to catch that? I will obviously just stream stuff that is safe for YouTube. I want to thank my Patreons, and I want to thank you. Yes, you, who stayed till the end. Thank you, you're fucking awesome. And that's it. Or go out.